Oil. It's one of the most important and precious natural resources on the planet. But would you ever take a bath in it? We're back here in the shop with the 54 New Yorker Deluxe, uh, 331 firepower V8, the 235 horsepower version. And I've got here the air cleaner. Um, last video, we kind of did a tour under the hood of what we found under there. Um, this is the air cleaner as it came off the car. Um, it has been untouched since 1964, I believe we have determined. So. We're going to go through kind of the, the pieces here. We're going to clean this thing up um, and, and, you know, make it hopefully look pretty close to like it did when it was brand new. But I'll just show you kind of the pieces of it. Um, fairly large. It's like an extra large pizza. It's 16 inches in, in diameter. There's really only two, two parts to it. Um, we've got this center piece here in the middle that lifts directly out. This little slot you see around the top, that's where your airflow went in for your engine. Uh, that's it. Um, and it would draw your airflow down through this, through that gap down the side of this centerpiece, which fit relatively snug up against the side of your residence chamber here. And then your airflow will go down and it would hit your, your oil reservoir down here in the bath. Um, this oil has been in here since the 1960s and it is uh, sludgy, full of dirt. But the rest of it's pretty clean. Um, you know, the outside looks gross. I'm gonna have a quick rag there. The, out the outside looks gross, but this inside part, you know, before I spilled oil on it, it's uh, it's clean. The center portion is clean. Inside the lid, here, up in here, this is clean. So, so whatever it does, it, it obviously does it well because this is uh, is quite clean. This this is called a hiss pad up here. This uh, silencer pad right here, and this is super clean up in here. So, uh, whatever it does, it works. It. Um, it's obviously done its job well. And you know, if you're gonna rebuild the car, get a car back on the road and use it the way I intend to, you know, it's gonna be a, take the car to the, to the car show maybe on, on a Sunday or take the, take the way for ice cream on Saturday night. Uh, just do a little tour. Um, oil bath, air cleaners, they work just fine. Um, keeps everything original. Um, you never have to buy a replacement filter. That, this, this is it. The only thing you have to replace is the oil in the bottom as it gets sludgy. So uh, as cars age and, and, and become more and more vintage, my 88 Ram Charger, for example, there may come a time in the near future where I won't be able to buy a replacement um, air filter element um, at, at a local store. I'll have to maybe get one ordered in from a specially custom place. and. And right now they're probably about $25 and they might be 50 or $100 and years from now, I don't know. This, there is no element to, to buy. This, this is the system. You gotta put a little bit of oil, 30 weight oil in it and it works. How it works, that's the big mystery. I had no idea, I'm 52 years old. Uh, when I grew up, all the cars that, that I was around had, you know, the large air cleaner on top, but they had a paper element. Um, so how an oil bath, filter work. Uh, I learned something new and I'm going to show you uh, how it works. Take you over to the whiteboard and we'll take a look at how that goes. All right, come on. Okay, over here at the whiteboard and at the screen here. Um, I've got a very poor drawing. I never said I was an artist. I've kind of a cutaway of this. This is from the shop manual. This is the oil bath air cleaner for my car. Um, so this kind of gives you a good picture of what it looks like. So you got the big outside 
housing portion of it here all the way around. This open space here, this is a low frequency silencing chamber. Um, this section in here, this open space, this is the high frequency silencing chamber. A lot of engineering involved in the, in the whole air cleaner assembly was to keep things quiet. So um, a big portion of the volume of this assembly is for um, acoustic control and also this, the hiss pad across the top up here. Um, I'll show you that in person on, on, the, on the filter. So this is your filter media here in this section here. This is attached to the center portion, the lid portion here. Okay, so that kind of gives you a picture of what what it looks like. So with that in mind, we'll go over here to this cutout. Here in the blue, I've got the outside housing. And the red, I've got the center portion that drops in over top. Um, I'm going to grab a green marker. I'm colorblind, so I may grab the wrong one. So green's going to be our airflow. Um, black is going to be dirt and oil. So in this housing across the bottom right here is your oil reservoir. So all across the bottom of this chamber is oil sitting in there. Oil right there. Okay. So that's the oil. Your airflow comes in to that slot right there between the top housing and the bottom housing. It comes in on both sides. That's green. Okay. I think it's green. Yeah, it's green. Color blind. Um, okay. So there's your airflow coming right there. And that's the air inlet slot right here that I'm referencing here. This little space right here. Okay. So your air is coming along and it's got dust and debris and pollen in it and I don't know, mosquitoes or whatever else. I'm going to use black for that because black is better. So you got stuff riding on in the air, right? Coming in dirty air all the way around. And you got to remember too, in the 1940s, 1950s, especially in Canada, you were more likely than not to be driving on a dirt road or a gravel road as opposed to paved roads. So there was a lot of dirt and dust in the air when you were driving. If you've ever driven down a grid road in Saskatchewan and met an oncoming vehicle and the big cloud of dust that envelops you, uh, that was every day. Uh, in the 40s and the 50s, all across North America and probably the world. So your air was, was quite dirty. Um, lots of soot and things like that in your air. So the black is the dirt. There's riding along on there. So what your air does when it hits this air inlet, it goes down this narrow passage. And of course, as, as it narrows up, you narrow up the the, the space it's going through and it's going to accelerate. So your wind, your wind, your airflow is going to go faster down, straight down that shot right there. So it takes a 90 degree bend right there, comes in and goes straight down. So this is getting, your engine's a big air pump and it's sucking hard. It's pulling air down through the system, right? It's coming, pulling air, pulling air into the carburetor and that's coming in there. So it's, it's coming in, coming in hot. So your air is coming in and it's coming in and your air is dirty and it's going fast. Does that 90 degree turn, whips down that, that passage right here, over here, it's coming down here, right down there on both sides. And you see how quite narrow that space is. So you can imagine as it narrows up, it's going to accelerate that airflow uh, down. So it's coming down and she's dirty, baby. Coming down, there's dirt and debris in there and it's just whipping, it's bucking, going straight down, straight down. And then it's forced to do a 180 degree turn. Whew. Whip, whip, straight back up 180 degrees. So your dust and dirt and pollen and mosquitoes, everything else that's in your, in your air, airflow that's coming in, it is going at the same speed as everything else and it's whipping down here too, but it's heavier than the air. So what happens when you're, when the air gets that 180 whip, all your dirt and debris wants to keep going in that direction. So it's going to slam straight down into your oil and the oil is going to grab that dirt and debris 
and the air is going to continue back up clean no dirt debris going back up here so it comes in dirty whips down 180 degree whip around and comes up with all the dirt and debris suspended down here in the oil so um, it goes up through this filter material at that point right here and there's a small slot on the inside at the top here and your airflow would cross over this what they call the hiss pad so again that's a silencer pad that sits up in here so your air comes in down up and then it's got to do another 180 degrees down the throat of the air cleaner down into the carburetor down into your engine and making you power for combustion so it works really good the dirt and debris all gets suspended in the oil and you see inside that that air cleaner assembly you know 60 years later the sides of it were clean it was like mom's angel food cake pan it was it was clean the hiss pad on top is like it just came out of the factory up at the top here so the filter definitely works so why don't we use it um, the big problem if you look here what our air does as it comes in it's restricted first of all it's forced to do a 90 degree turn and restricted straight down and then it's forced to turn again 180 degrees and then it's forced to turn again 180 degrees down into your engine so restriction takes power and all these bends and turns take power your engine's got to suck all that through and if your engine can breathe free it, it uh, has more power to do other things like move your car and get you better gas mileage. So the filters really worked well. Uh, they just weren't very efficient. You look at, you know, like my Ram charger has an air filter paper element disposable and it's got a big thing on top of the engine that looks like that with a snorkel out the side and, you know, your airflow goes in and it hits a paper element in here and then just goes straight down into the carburetor and in. So, it's a lot uh, smoother path for your air to take without that necessary restriction to accelerate that air down into your oil bath. So hopefully that makes sense to you. That's how an oil bath air cleaner works. Um, like you said, they work great. Um, they're just not very efficient. So, but I think they look good too. So we'll get to the, to the cleanup part next. Okay, let's do that. Got the um, main housing out of the sandblaster. Just do a little bit of touch up with some sandpaper on it, but got most of the uh, old paint and the debris off of it. I taped up where the uh, sticker was. So I'm gonna try to save that sticker if we can. And next to go into Sandy is the lid for it. Um, this is after just wiping it clean. Um, the black paint that was on here is uh, pretty much all scraped off. I don't know. I don't know how we would have managed to do that. Um, I don't know. I guess you know it's 70 years old, so it's just kind of surprising that it's so uh, so scratched off all the paint on it. So. Anyways, we'll uh, roll it through Sandy. I've got the bottom all taped off and bagged off. Uh, I don't want any sand going up into that air filter mesh or that hiss pad underneath there. So I've got it all taped up, you know, around that edge to keep that edge uh, original. And uh, yeah, we'll throw them into Sandy and we'll get to the next, next stage. Okay, we got... Uh... Everything out of Sandy, they look pretty good. I've sprayed them down with brake cleaner. So I think uh, 
I think we'll do some painting next. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. <laughs> 